talked about sort of incessantly sometimes because Not we were in Paris together. We were. We did. Jacob did cuisine while I did pastry. And then Jacob, though, Jacob goes back to London. He gets his grand diploma, um, which is a crazy program. Yeah, uh, it's, it's very intense. Le Cordon Bleu again, the London branch of Le Cordon Bleu, um, which is pastry and cuisine. And then he stays on and he studies restaurant management. Yes. Yeah, for another three months. So he's in London forever and then comes back and now... We're very lucky to have him because he's a culinary teacher at Sequoia High School. Yep, I am the, well, I finished my first year as culinary teacher full time. I was lucky enough to work there as a substitute and uh, fell in love. I always knew I wanted to teach and teaching culinary is just as amazing as it sounds. And so I was lucky enough to be able to stay on full time. And we're heading back into the school year. So I'm happy to be here before things really get going. And social distancing teaching. Yes. What is that like in with culinary it classes? It is. It ha, it was difficult at first, um, but I kind of let gave the students free reign. I just said, as long as you're cooking, I'm happy. And I gave them really simple recipes, and they blew me out of the water. Absolutely. That's exciting. Yeah. They uh, they did stuff I couldn't even imagine. So they so embraced it too. They did cakes and full meals and soups and whatever you could imagine one of my students made it uh, during social distancing good for them yeah. i think that's wonderful and now he starts we nabbed him right before the school year starts on monday yes yeah school year starts already tomorrow technically we have students in the next week oh my so. gosh so we nabbed him and he's teaching us how to temper chocolate something i cannot do yes i am a huge fan of chocolate it was one of my favorite parts of the pastry program they introduce it at the end of your first three months, and it's like a very slow introduction. And then they just kick it into high gear where <laughs> you... I wish I had the photo to show you, but there's a photo that I took where it's a table that is... I can't, I'm bad at estimating, but it's huge. It's a huge long table, enough to fit 16 people working in a kitchen. And there are probably a thousand different kinds of truffles <gasps> that we all worked on. Um, oh my god! So I love chocolate. Oddly enough, it's not my favorite thing to eat, but it's so much fun to work with. Gosh. So thank goodness for him, because I'm telling you, that's not how I feel about chocolate. <laughs> I think it's such a pain and really tricky. But it's not that tricky, and that's why Jacob is here yes, to show us. it's not as tricky as it sounds. A lot of people hear the word tempering and don't quite understand, and it's a scary word, but it's going to be okay. So. Should we get started? Yes. Okay. We have a bunch of different types of chocolate. Yes. Can you, can you just tell us why we'd want one over the other yeah. over like another? So here, yeah, get up there. I'll stand back here. When tempering chocolate, you want, I so the idea behind tempering, and I'll go more into the science because it's going to take a little bit for it to melt. But what you're looking for is it to set hard at room temperature. It should have be beautiful and shiny, and it should snap. When you pull, when you break it. Most chocolates that you buy in the store, like this, uh, this has been cut so there are a few flakes on it, but like you can see, it's shiny, it has a nice sheen, we cut it and it snapped. And I so, think this is what we used for that. It's a perfect. baker's bar of chocolate. Yeah. And so that is, uh, everything chocolate you buy comes tempered. So everything you buy comes tempered, but unfortunately, to work with it, to make bark or any other chocolate item, you have to melt it down so you can get the shape you want. And that means you have to re-temper it. So the Guitard is a wonderful chocolate manufacturer that is actually located in the Bay Area. It's about five minutes away from where I live. We have such great local chocolate here. Yes. We're really fortunate. So we have lots of Guitard. Um, we also have, of course, Ghirardelli. A San Francisco classic. When you are looking for a good chocolate, the thing you are looking for is a, especially for tempering, you want a chocolate that is high in cocoa butter. And I'll explain that more also. And that's just looking at the ingredients when you're Yes. Processing? So just look at the back of the ingredients. So this Sometimes, <laughs> for example, these are baking chips and they're created to keep their shape. So when you put them in the oven, they don't melt everywhere. 
because you want them to stay in your cookies and your blondies and your cakes. So these are made to hold their shape so they have a higher melting point and don't quite temper. And I'm pretty sure in the ingredient list, we have a lot of uh, lecithin, different oils that aren't cocoa butter. So, for example, these Ghirardelli cocoa butter is the third ingredient or second ingredient in this. Cocoa butter, once again, is the third or second ingredient in this. If you don't have a chocolate on hand that's high in cocoa butter, and maybe you have chocolate chips that don't say they're high in cocoa butter, just follow along because okay. we're going to practice. Yes. And I'm going to give you a big tip right at the end to make beautiful bark no matter what. So follow along and we will get started. Yes. And so, I'm sous chefing today. That's like what we do here though. It's like follow along no matter what. Absolutely. We're practicing no matter what. The first thing, I don't have it on yet because I wanted to make a big deal about putting it on. Chocolate has a habit of getting everywhere. So if you're in your favorite white summer shirt and you don't want to make it tie-dye with dark chocolate, put on an apron. <laughs> I am telling you, those lessons, whenever I work with chocolate, it's always the worst. It gets like on your the side of your hand and you touch something and you move something and it gets everywhere. So I'm going to put an apron on and then we will get started. Yes. And we're doing two types today. Yes. We are going to do a semi-sweet, uh, which is a dark chocolate. And we're going to do a white chocolate. Which is notoriously more difficult to temper. White chocolate is more difficult to temper. If you came with white chocolate, go for yeah, it. Yeah, give it a shot. Give it a shot. So, we're going to start with the dark chocolate. And we have baking bars. If you have chips or anything else that is in small pieces, just put them in a bowl. Since we have baking bars, I'm just going to quickly cut it and show you how to do that. And the good thing about doing different kinds of chocolate is that you really get to practice. I, for our final, at, for our pastry final at Cordon Bleu, we had to temper one type of chocolate because I love tempering chocolate so much. <laughs> I did two, and it actually really stood out. I did white and dark because it takes some extra time to do that. So when I'm cutting the bars, I'm just cutting uh, lengthwise, and then I'm cutting into small pieces about chip size. That's all we're looking for. What are the, I get this wrong every time. If you have small pieces and they're not baking chips, they are sometimes. Yes, and they're shaped like this. Wafers, are they called wafers? They're called wafers it? or they're called couverture. Couverture. Which is a very fancy yes. French name. And so basically they're just, they're basically wafers. They have a flat bottom side. They have a little mound. And those you can work with, but baking chips are a little more finicky. Yes. Because of the cocoa butter content. Yeah, couverture okay. is usually uh, made to be melted down. Uh -huh. For example, it says on here, somewhere it says enrobing, which is basically covering things in chocolate. If your chocolate says enrobing, it means that it's made to be melted down and reheated. Oh my god, I should feel like I should be taking notes. I hope you guys are writing this stuff down. I'll make sure when I edit this video on the back end, I'm going to put some of these buzzwords up. Obviously, we don't have a recipe yes, today. Yes, there's unfortunately a lot of terms, a lot of lingo that comes along with it. So it can be hard to follow along, but any questions... Yes, and just I'll get ask. your questions. I see we might have some. I'll pop up just to make sure. Being a teacher, I am used to a live audience, so I'm going to leave Sarah up to read out the questions. Yes. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thanks, Sarah. Someone does have guitar dark baking chips. It doesn't Perfect. say that there's any cocoa butter in there. Should they give it a shot anyways? I would give it a shot. That should be okay. Even just to practice. And it's just, not that... Exactly. It won't be ruined, right? It just might not no. temper. And I will make sure that everyone's chocolate at the end turns out into beautiful bark. So we Magic. cut up our baking bars into small pieces. Size isn't super important here. It's not like if you have anything too large, it's going to ruin anything. We do want it somewhat equal so it all melts together. And... Since we're going to start the melting process, first off, all of the chocolate is going into one big bowl. If you're using two different types, make sure they get in separate bowls. Mm. And 
we have right here our bowl of chocolate and we're gonna use a hot water bath also called a bain marie and so we have a big pot full of water that the bowl is going to fit on top of the reason we do this is chocolate has two big enemies water and heat and so you, can, you can't really put chocolate straight on a pot on heat to melt it because we need a kind of lower, more gentle heat. And this is what happens with this. The water evaporates, comes up, very gently heats up the bowl, and we will melt the chocolate very evenly. But water is also a big enemy of chocolate. So we want to make sure that we don't get any water into it as we're melting it. So we're going to turn this on a low heat. Perfect. And we are going to, uh, every once in a while, just give it a stir. We're just going to give it a nice, even stir. It is super hot in here today. And make sure that it melts evenly. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Already, I have a super chocolatey hand. <laughs> so I'm going to wash it really quickly. I can stir this. This feels like a stretch, but if you've ever <laughs> attempted, well, if you've ever attempted to melt white chocolate baking chips in a microwave, if you probably have it seized on you before. Yes. It's probably seized on you, yeah, which is when it, it gets probably has heated thick. up too much. And then if you've successfully, so many horror stories, successfully melted white chocolate in the microwave and then attempted to dye it using a liquid food dye, yep. you also might have encountered it seizing. Yeah, unfortunately, you have to buy special food dye. <laughs> yeah, it has to be fat, it has to be fat soluble or gel, usually it's called gel food coloring. That can color white chocolate. But if you add water-based, yes. once again, it's going to seize up. So as this melts, because this will take a little bit of time, I'll explain why we have to do this. Because yes. it seems silly to have to deal with chocolate this much. And so <laughs> the interesting thing about chocolate is the cocoa butter, which is usually the main fat in chocolate. It's the thing that holds it all together. Um, the cocoa butter can actually... The fat in the cocoa butter can set up five different ways. And it can form what? five different kinds of crystals. It's very interesting. And we only want one of them. And so imagine like a jigsaw where the, it's, imagine the most annoying jigsaw where pieces fit together, <laughs> but they could go with other pieces. And so you can make everything fit together, but the picture is not quite right. And so what we're going to do here is we're going to heat up the chocolate. We're going to melt it, which breaks all of the cocoa bonds, cocoa butter bonds. So imagine we're going to pull them apart and we're going to cool it down to the temperature we want. And basically what that's going to do is it's going to get everything right into place. And then we're going to heat it up one final time. And that's going to just leave everything right in place. So when we leave it to cool at room temperature, it comes together naturally. Oh my goodness. So that is why we have to go through this somewhat annoying process. Can you tell once it's set improperly, which of the five ways it might have set? No, usually if it sets improperly, the crystals are all over the place. So you may oh. have one that's good and one that's not. And you know, one of a high number three. So it's very, they call them alpha bonds and beta bonds, and there's a beta one. Oh my goodness. It's all very technical, and all of that is above my head. <laughs> we, have a, we have a couple people who've said they have failed to melt, uh, melt white chocolate in the microwave. I yes. hear you. I am with you. Yeah. Melting chocolate in the microwave is a completely great thing to do. You just have to take it <laughs> really slow. And like, who has the patience, really right? Really slow. And someone said we, you and I, are used to making, a couple of us, making uh, truffles on a hot day. Yes. Yeah. We have done that before. Yes. Successfully. Yeah, it can, working with chocolate, you always want a nice temperate day. You don't want anything too hot. Not like today, you we, guys. Uh, <laughs> my family and I made, um, we're making a large batch of gift boxes, each of four different kinds of chocolate truffles. And we did it on a day when it was 95 out. And the chocolate was coming out of temper naturally. So it was too hot and we couldn't cool it to the temperature that we needed it to. And so it kept coming out of temper. 
But we made it through. We have some funny videos of that day. Oh, yeah. Don't we? We do. Oh. We do. So while this is melting, I'm going to get the second yeah. set of chocolate, which is our white chocolate. I'm going to clean off the board quickly just so we don't get a lot of dark chocolate into our white chocolate. And there are benefits to tempering chocolate. Yes, absolutely. Like a lot of them. My absolutely. favorite being that instead of having to wait with the chocolate on the counter for four hours for it to set, yes. doesn't it take minutes? How many minutes yes, does it take? Yes, it should, it should set very quickly. Like if you're dipping strawberries, you want those to set quickly? Yes. My like, gosh. You want tempered chocolate. Also, if... Um, Gosh, I forgot what I was gonna say. Visually, I'm thinking too much about the white chocolate. You want it too. Yes, visually, it'll have a nice clean shine. Like no streaking, right? No streaking. See, temper. You can tell when something's been dipped in tempered chocolate versus like dull, yes. untempered chocolate. Melting wafers are great because they're easy to melt. You don't really have to worry about them seizing, but you don't quite get the shine and crack of tempered chocolate yes the crack there's a snap to yes. a tempered chocolate yeah. right you already said that i'm just yeah. getting really excited i'm not sure i've ever tempered chocolate before i'm sure you have i don't think so i think i've watched you temper chocolate before and i'm watching you do it now we do have if you if you're actually making bark with us today we do have some well i think we have some very fun flavors that we're doing yes yes we will do you want to show them now yes go ahead okay we're doing dark chocolate and we're doing white either. chocolate and um, for the dark chocolate, for the dark chocolate, this was a debate. We had a little debate. And I just wanna, okay, good. Um, for some reason, mm, the Instagram, my screen keeps dimming. And so I keep coming over to tap it, but when I tap it, the comments go. So bear with me if I miss your comment, I, I will get back to it. Um, dark chocolate, we're doing potato chips and toffee bits. I mean, right? I'm so excited about this. And then, that was Jacob's creation. Actually, he had some really cool ideas. Yeah. That's where we landed. Um, and then for, I'm really excited about this, but for the white chocolate, we have dried berries and cherries and fruity pebbles, which I think is going to just be an absolute incredible visual yes. too. It'll this be stuff beautiful. on white chocolate. So I'm really, really excited. And I do have a second pot, but I was worried about tempering two chocolates at once. We'll get it going. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay, just checking in. Oh, and the other thing you need, oh, so yeah. if you have your toppings, it's nice to have a mountain ready to go. The other thing you need is a water, ice water bath, preferably, or just cold water. So that is one thing you could get set up. You want to make sure that the bowl that you have your chocolate in can fit nicely into the bowl mm. for the water bath. If you don't... If you use your biggest bowl, you might want to put your chocolate into a smaller one and then fill the one up you had the chocolate in with ice cream. Oh, good point. We're not going to eat anything out of here, so okay. it's fine even if chocolate's left in here. Okay. So you don't have to wash it just to put ice water in it. Okay. I'm trying to think of like alternatives if you use your biggest bowl. If you have a yeah. stopper for your sink and you can you fill could the bottom that. of your sink with a little bit of water yeah. and ice. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I never want people to not be able to do something because you don't have that like third bowl. Yeah, unfortunately, chocolate takes it. a lot of bowls and a lot Ooh. of pots. You want to pull out the other pot to get the white chocolate? Yeah. Out? Someone is asking Perfect. if they can add chili. <gasps> yes, absolutely. You can add chili, and I would do that when the chocolate is melted and tempered. And we'll we'll go through. I will remember and I will tell you at what point you should add the chili. And so, like I said, we're going to break all the bonds and that's what we're doing right now. We are going to completely melt the chocolate. It should be smooth and silky and shiny. We're going to cool it down using the water bath and we're going to stir really well and we're going to make sure that the all of the chocolate cools down together and then we're going to heat it up a tiny, tiny bit. And that's what is called the working temperature because you're going to be able to work with it. You're going to be, it's going to be fluid. It should be running off your spatula. So that is what we are working towards. And then that final working temperature, you should know that it's tempered at. Whoa. We will see. You don't need a thermometer to do this. You don't, 
In fact, a probe thermometer doesn't work well, so like candy thermometers don't work well. Oh. I the chefs at school and I have used it a couple times mm. before. They would use an infrared thermometer, so it looks like mm. one of those uh, thermometer guns that you point at the chocolate and it comes back with a reading. But the reason that doesn't work that well is because it only gives you the temperature of the top. And so oh. if the bottom is too warm, it won't work. So you can't use something like a meat thermometer either. No. See, that you just gotta either. be able to feel it. And I feel like that's what makes chocolate so tricky. Yes, and you once you do it a couple times, even if you have good chocolate, it may not work out this time. But once you do it a couple times, you get the hang of it. And our dark chocolate is starting to melt beautifully. I'm so nervous that you put me in charge of the white chocolate. Do oh, you want to switch? No, 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 no. I am going to be a big girl and I'm not going to freak out. And I'm going to watch what you're doing as I just melt this. That's my whole job is melting this. Perfect. And this is also not the only way to temper chocolate. This is, I call this the ice bath way. Ooh. Because there are, basically, you're always going to heat up your chocolate until it's melted. But there are different ways of cooling it down. And so there's one called the seeding method. And that's where you don't melt down all of your chocolate, but you keep a portion. I f there's a certain percentage that it makes it perfect. It's like 20 something percent on the side. And once you melt all your chocolate down, you add the chocolate that hasn't been melted and it really quickly brings down the temperature. I have heard of, that's one mm -hmm. of the ones they, they did go over tempering chocolate in school. Just a quick demo. We never did it, but that's the one they, they were talking about, I think. And then table tempering. Yes, and that is by far the most difficult. Really? You, I, I have no think idea. So. No, I have such a warped view because I've never tried it. You, uh, so table tempering, you uh, melt your chocolate down and you pour it onto a marble slab or marble table and you use basically pastry scrapers to move it back and forth. And that is another way to cool down chocolate. Um. And then once you hit the right temperature, you put it back in the bowl and warm it up a bit. And then a new thing that people are doing is using sous vide machines to temper chocolate. What? How? Because sous vide has such great temperature control. If you haven't heard of sous vide, oh. basically you put, um, you make a big water bath. It can be in a pot. It can be in a plastic um, jug and you stick a machine in it. And it circulates the water and heats it up to very precise temperatures. And because chocolate, every different kind of chocolate, even if it's the same exact ingredients, but from a different maker, they all have to reach different temperatures. So that's why it's kind of hard to talk about temperatures precisely, I because see. this may need to hit 92.3 mm -hmm. and that may need to, I'm making this up. But you get the idea. And so what you can do is if you have a sous vide machine is you can put your chocolate in a Ziploc bag and get the air out and you can hit those temperatures perfectly in a water bath. Oh, wow. But you're working with a lot of water around chocolate. So it's kind of a double edged sword. Well, it's a little scary to think about. You can't get the water in the chocolate, but we're gonna put all of our chocolate into water. Exactly. Um, what brand of chocolate are we using for the dark chocolate? So we are using Ghirardelli for both kinds of chocolate. And for someone whose chocolate has melted faster than ours, should they take it off the heat right now while they wait? Yes, take it off the heat and just put it on the side. We're doing pretty large quantities of chocolate. That's something I wanted to ask you about, quantities. It is more, the more cocoa butter you have, the easier it is to temper because the more crystals you're working with. So it's actually much harder to temper smaller quantities of chocolate. So if you have a really tiny bowl, stick with us, but it may be a little more difficult to temper. Why is And if that? you are done, you can just put it, take it off the heat, set it on the side, and we will all start cooling with the ice bath together. Why is... Quantities wise. Why is it more difficult to temper small, a small quantity of chocolate? I would say because there's a smaller amount of cocoa butter. That's okay. also why it's harder to temper. Even if a chocolate has cocoa butter, but it's like last on the ingredient list, that's why it may be more difficult to temper also. Because you're working with less of the crystals. 
So. Now, it's beneficial to use tempered chocolate when you're dipping or doing truffles mm -hmm. or doing chocolate designs or archi chocolate architecture. Wait, is there is there ever a time it's not useful where you'd recommend just melt it in the microwave? I can't think of one. I actually wouldn't know. I can't think of a single one. We always use tempered chocolate. It's for, like Sarah said, architecture, designs, even for writing on top of um, cakes, anything look like that. Because it'll better once it sets. It sets and it's nice and shiny and it sets quickly. So you don't have to worry about smudging it on top of your beautiful cake that you just made. I do have a few cookies where I've got chocolate drizzles. I have a few. I don't know if they're on the site. I'm trying to think of what's in the pastry shop right now. Um, and I don't use tempered chocolate for those drizzles. I just I just melt it in like a paper yeah. cone and I and I do yeah. a quick drizzle. But it doesn't set. It takes forever for those yeah. to set. Sometimes. But usually since those are smaller lines... That's a good if you're point. doing really small designs, it's not quite noticeable. But if you're doing larger found, work, found a place. Yeah, it's recommended, but you don't need it for small designs. But otherwise, you're learning how to temper chocolate right now. You can, you're gonna be able to do this. And I was thinking, if you practice enough, you can give really nice looking snappy chocolate bark to all yes. of your. Friends and family come Christmas time this a year. A perfect Christmas gift. And who knows if we're having Christmases together. That's true. Maybe we're not seeing friends still for a bit come Christmas time. But you so, can drop off some, you know, social distance chocolate bark. So I am just going to feel the bottom of the bowl here. Make sure it's not getting too hot. One important thing to mention is that if you, if um, you did take your bowl off, one thing that the chefs always had us do is to wipe down the bottom of the bowl oh. just to make sure no water ever made its way in there because eventually we are going to be pouring out the tempered chocolate and so you don't want to have beautifully tempered chocolate you're pouring on oh, your bark course. and the water runs from the bottom of the bowl all that condensation and ruins what you've done. It's the things you don't think about. It, and is, it, it ruins really everything. Oh my goodness. We are almost melted with the dark chocolate. I promise. I promise. Let me see if we have any questions. Okay, yeah, I'm not going to I think I fixed the Instagram problem, by the way. Sorry if it pauses again. That's my phone going to sleep. Okay. Sorry Looks, I think we're all caught up on questions. Okay, good. Holler if you've got one. I did want to ask, in terms, in, like, in the spirit of the chili question, at yes. what point can you add non-watery items to tempered chocolate? You want to do it at the way I end? I would do it at the way end, okay. right before you're going to use it. Okay. So that, I think, would be best. Oh, and I also wanted to ask, layered tempered chocolate, because some barks have two layers of chocolate. Yes. Absolutely. All you would do is you would get your first kind ready. Okay. Tempered. I recommend not working with both at the same time, unless you have done it a couple times before. You would get your first kind ready, you would pour it out, let it set, okay. and then you would pour out your second kind right on top once that's set. Just make sure you all you usually want to deal with your dark first because it's harder to temper and usually the white chocolate won't melt it on top. Oh, I didn't think about that. Can the heat mm -hmm. of the chocolate melt the chocolate underneath? All of these... Now, chocolate, chocolate, what is boulangerie, patisserie, I'm just thinking of chocolatier. Yeah. It's a whole under brand. Oh, it does. Confissorie. It would fall under confissorie, which we talked about during oh, yeah. Confraline Pre Week. Um, but this is a whole other, this is like Candy Week Part 2 as well, you guys. Yeah, it kind of is. We're doing something fun because it's week 20, in case I didn't mention it. What? 20 weeks! 20 weeks of baking together and creating together. Okay. Perfect week to have a guest, I'm just saying, and to do some chocolate work. So this is melting nicely. It's coming together. There are still a few large chunks. I'm not going to take it off quite yet. If there are some chunks left in it, but it's mainly melted, it's, it's pretty safe to take it off the heat. Okay. Because then you know that... It's hot enough to kind of keep, to continue melting everything else. So I'm going to just keep stirring. 
keep it moving. We want to make sure, and this is the hardest part, that every little bit of chocolate is at the same temperature. We don't want any patches that are, like, the, you don't want the top to be cooler than the bottom. You don't want anything quite like that. So scrape down your sides too. Yep, scrape down your, scrape sides. Down your sides. If you have a rubber spatula, it's great to use. If you don't, just try and get as much off of the sides as you can. Oh, yeah, this is a good time. If you don't have a rubber spatula, you'll see later if you don't have an, an offset. Okay. Week 20, you guys, yes. you all better have offsets by now. It's okay if you don't. You can use a lot of different kinds of equipment, but it's nice to have. Okay, no, I okay. pretend to preach. You can bake no matter what you have, except for offsets. you got to grab an offset. Perfect. So, this is all melted. Oh, my gosh, guys, here we go. Oh, my, would you like... Off. Sorry. Okay. Would you like this is a little there? hard. I didn't give Jacob a good bowl size. And you can put it right on the counter. Perfect. Tea Perfect. So, that is all good. And another little trick we learned, you can take a little cloth towel... You can form a little circle oh, out of it. Oh, this is so cute. And you can put it right down. And this is a good way to stir items without having to use a second hand. So it sits right in the cloth. And you can, can, you can stir it. You don't have to worry about it. I have made a mess of chocolate everywhere, unfortunately. Hence the apron. It's what happens. I have chocolate okay. all over my spatula. And... Off the heat, I'm just gonna stir it for maybe a minute. Also, it can take care of your water on the bottom. Yeah, hey, dual purpose. So, I'm just stirring. We're starting the cooling down process. The one thing you'd want, Sarah already did it, is you want to keep your pot, turn your pot on the heat off, but keep it warm. Because that's going to be our warming method once we're cooled down. There was a time it was our first time doing chocolate decorations. We had to make a chocolate centerpiece, which is basically, we were doing a 2D image, piped chocolate and colored that we were gonna stand up. Mm. I was doing Sorcerer Mickey, of course, from Fantasia. That's amazing. If I'm gonna get these photos and hopefully I can, I can send them out. Well, oh, let me, let unfortunately, me. Unfortunately, no. we, were, we were tempering chocolate in pairs and the chef came over and told my partner that his chocolate wasn't in temper, even though mine was setting perfectly. What? And so he made us restart an hour into the lesson, meaning that we had an hour less to complete our product, and mine didn't look very oh, good by the end. That's the worst feeling. It was rough, especially oh. for someone who really likes chocolate. I'm trying to figure out if I would have broken down. There were times in culinary school where you just, yep. it's the only thing you have left are the tears in your eyes. Yep. It's a very, it's fun, you learn a ton, but it's a very uh, challenging experience. Once you're moving your chocolate around, you're going <laughs> to notice it's going to start sticking to the sides of the bowl. That's because the sides of the bowl are cooler than the middle of your chocolate. Okay. That means that it's starting to set on the sides of the bowl. You want to keep stirring and you want to get that warm chocolate to the outside edge and it will actually melt it. Wow. So now it's cooled down a bit. We're going to move to our ice bath. Be very careful. We do not want to get any water into our chocolate. Oh, yeah. Oh my goodness. So, so you're nice. just going to put it in and you're going to start stirring vigorously because that cold water is gonna start melting the sides of your, or it's gonna start setting the sides of your chocolate. And you want the warm parts of your chocolate to melt that. So keep scraping, making sure nothing's sticking. And we're gonna do this by eye. And what you're looking for is you're looking for your chocolate to become much more viscous. So you want it to start becoming thick and sludgy. You want to watch it start setting on the sides of the bowl, but you need to pull it off before it gets to the point where your spatula is stuck in it because it's turned into a rock. <laughs> so we're just going to keep stirring, keep checking the sides.
and we are getting close. Are these the bonds coming back together as it cools? Absolutely. Okay. And you want to, you should be able to start being able to pick up your spatula and draw ribbons on top. And it should be holding them a little bit in the top. Okay. And if this is an important part, because if you don't cool it down enough, you're not going to get those bonds forming together. If it's going too quickly, maybe your hand hurts from stirring, <laughs> you can take it out of the water, put it on the side. It'll, uh, you can stir it on the side for a bit, put it back in the ice bath, and you can go back and forth as much as you want. Melted chocolate, and it's not chocolate though, it's not just melted chocolate, but it always reminds me of the opening of Willy Wonka and the Chocolate yep. Factory when there's the ribbon Very coming down. Very classic. Oh. And you should be able to do that with your chocolate about now. That's exactly what it reminds me of. Oh, it's so gorgeous. And we're going to keep stirring, we're going to keep cooling down our chocolate. Around the edge of my bowl, it almost looks like spider webs are forming as I stir because it's getting so thick. It's so glossy. I swear I haven't seen seen anything that glossy before. Maybe. Hopefully we keep that sheen. Ganache. Yeah. But that's because it's added. You've added. You know what I mean? So much fat. If your chocolate keeps setting to the side, and no matter how much you stir, it doesn't um, wanna. It doesn't melt the sides. You want to take it out. Ooh, someone asked about the story with your apron, Sarah. Oh, my butterfly apron. Thank you. I've seen a few compliments today. I love this apron. I was getting close to the chocolate being completely stuck to the sides. So I pulled it out of the ice bath. I'm not going to say we're completely done yet, but I'm just going to stir it outside of the ice bath for a little bit. It is getting thick. It, I'm almost shocked that that like that, that this is how it works. We're looking okay. The bowl is still cold. That's one way to tell is to feel the side of the bowl where the chocolate is. Wow, it's so I can tell thick. we're getting close. If you can see the chocolate is especially here, where on the sides of the bowl, it is sticking to the sides. But when I stir it, like I said, it's still melting. It is still melting the sides of the bowl, and it's all coming back together. So I don't have any pieces on the sides of the bowl that aren't, that are so stuck together that we can't bring them back into the quantity. Okay. Now, this is another reason chocolate gets everywhere. There's a test you can do on the back of your pinky. You just want to feel it. And the chocolate, that's very cold. Do you want to give it a feel, Sarah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It please. should feel cold. Oh, wow. Yeah. That cooled down a lot. Yeah, but it's still yeah, not set. Real. So, oh of course, I'm giving my gosh. hands a wash. Seriously, I'm like on the verge of licking my finger right now. Sorry for washing my hands so much, everyone. I'm so used to Keep working it clean. with chocolate. No, you're good. So. This should be very close. The side, now it's starting to stick a little bit and it's harder to get off. It's very thick. And when you stir it, you can see kind of the pattern of your stir is sticking in. And this is one of the hardest parts now. This is technically tempered, but it's still a little too thick to pour out. It would kind of just sit in a mound. And so, and you could of course have bark like that, but if you want something that's okay, nice okay. and snaps, okay. you want to warm it up a bit. And so that's what we're going to do. We're going to use our hot water that's still sitting here, but not on the heat. We're not boiling. We're going to put our chocolate on. We're going to stir it for a bit until it loosens up. And we don't want to do this for a long time. It is better to have thicker chocolate than to do it for too long. Okay. If you heat it up for too long, the bonds that you got into place are going to drift apart. And you just work so hard. And you just work so hard to cool it down to such nice. a nice temperature. So, we're going to put it back on. We're going to stir. I should have gotten you a smaller pot. 
I know this person. I'm a little happy over here with my sizes. And then... Do you want to start cooling down the white chocolate? Yes, you think I should start stirring? Okay, guys, here we go. You'll I can't tell you how perfect. nervous I am. I'm so nervous to do this. I'm going to seize it because of my history with white chocolate. You are not. Okay. You are not at all. And we are just looking for it to become slightly looser. And so the ribbons on top, that form, aren't quite so thick. And we're going to do it with a very low heat. I realized, just in case someone doesn't know what I mean by bark, I feel like I should, oh, just in case you yes, don't know, I didn't think about good. it. Chocolate bark is literally just chocolate that has been melted and formed into, uh, um, just like, what am I saying? With an offset, just spread out, hello, spread out on a sheet pan. And then you can sprinkle it with toppings and it sets, and then you can break it apart like pieces of tree bark, which I think is where it gets its name. And it always can look, it can just look so pretty, um, uh, depending on what you put on top. Now, my white chocolate is really sticking to the side. Should I pull it off and reincorporate? Yes, I, well, yeah, I'd pull it off of the okay. heat. Okay, let me show you what I'm talking about here. White chocolate, and this isn't fair to Sarah, is much I harder know. to temper. You guys! So, oh, that's what I wanted to talk about, the different kinds of chocolate. So this is looking very loose and good, but it's still setting a little bit on the bottom. So I'm gonna pull this off. I'm just gonna keep stirring it, make sure that no part heats up too much or no part cools down too much. Chocolate is very much about keeping it in the center. You, it, as long as you can keep it in a mass in the center, it's like a buddy system. You don't want any pieces to get lost on the side so they heat up too much or you don't want them to get lost on the side and cool down and harden. That was a big issue for a lot of students in culinary school. When the chocolate would get all around the side and that would harden and they'd have a tiny little bit to work with in the center. Oh no! <laughs> Which is sort of what, like I was, was that the same thing as what I might have been experiencing for a second here when it was hardening yes. the size of the bowl? But if you want to show them, Sarah but I got mixed it, off. it all in and it all came off. I got it off and it's going okay. Everyone needs a buddy. Exactly. Everyone Even Mike Wazowski, pair them up with the teacher. You know, everyone's got to, if you got an odd number of kids in the bowl, someone's got to, oh, you're, my gosh, you're the teacher now. I am. I'm, I'm paired up. Paired up. You have to pair up with a student. Luckily, our <laughs> kitchen is fabulous, and we have enough stations for every student to work at. The kitchen is truly the beautiful. The kitchen is amazing. Oh, my God. But how many, how many students do you, like, have in there at max? Uh, so m max is 36 at a time. That's a lot. Which is a lot. Of people cooking it's and there's a lot, heat but and fire. People and... love to cook and people love the class. Aww. And hopefully they love me as the teacher. That's. I didn't think, do your students know you're here today? Ah! Some of them might. I should have, I hope if, if you're one of Jacob's students, shout it out. Okay. So I'm gonna say that that's at a good working temperature. By the way, should I reheat mine? Where am I? Mm. It's like I haven't been paying attention. Yes. I have been. I promise. I'm so nervous. Mine is is um staying yeah, in its I would ribbon. Get that on the. Get that on the heat. Is it like an emergency? Or no. Are you just chilling in emergency? No, I think we're okay. Chocolate emergency. But definitely get it. That's an even better example because that was really staying in a mound and it would have taken a lot to spread it out into a nice layer. That's what you were saying and it's so, okay, but that's not yes. what we're looking for today with bark. So we're gonna do one final thing. I'm gonna come on this side. Oh yeah, yeah, We're doing do pretty it. good. We are, look at us, hello. And the, this, is, shock. this is what we call the temper test. And what you do this is you get wrapping. your chocolate, you make a nice ribbon, you want it to be thin on the bottom and all you're gonna do is, when that ribbon is flowing, take an offset spatula, a knife, a, a knife yeah. any kitchen utensil. Offset. And you're just going to run a quick line underneath. And what you do is you're gonna find an area and you're gonna put it in a cool area. And this is, I showed so Sarah hot. earlier, this is where some pastry chefs, confectioners can look like psychos because you can tell, you get to be able to tell the small changes in temperature. So for example, this heat's giving off, or this light's giving off a lot of heat. So we don't want to stick it underneath the light. We want something about room temperature. So you kind of like walk around with your hand out. Sometimes on top of fridges are pretty good. 
That might be the best right now. Do it. So I'm going to put it up there. And we're just going to leave it. And this is where we cross our fingers. Because we should come back in a few minutes. And it should be set. And while we wait, I am going to... Uh, just make sure the chocolate stays in a mass in the center. If the edges are setting too much, we're gonna trade off the heat. I'm gonna put it back on the mm -hmm. heat for a bit and stir it all in. Oh, I forgot to take some out while it was not tempered. Oh, I really wanted to show you guys what, not, I was gonna call it bad, what, what non-tempered non chocolate looks like. Usually if your chocolate is the least tempered it can be, cause sometimes you can get close and you have some good areas, but if it's the least tempered, it will, when you pull it, it will bend. And I don't, I don't think you've ever eaten a candy bar that when you pull it, it bends. Like, uh, like a Hershey's. New. So, and also it will look dull on top and there could be swirls in it of white. There could be speckles on top. It's not very pleasing to the eye. It's not bad chocolate, it's not like it's gone off or gone rancid. It just doesn't look great. And so this is always, you know, trying to get the best texture, best look. That's looking beautiful. Should I keep going? I would go a little bit more. A little more, guys. A tiny bit more. Heat it up a little more. So is something like, and I don't know the ingredients of a Hershey's bar, but is a Hershey's bar tempered? Yes. It is. It sh if it has Could enough. Could you do this with a Hershey's bar? If it has enough cocoa butter. I don't know. I would assume what Hershey's does. I know it also has a lot of sugar. Oh, and that's what I was going to talk about. The different kinds of chocolate. Yes. And the differences between them. Please. So dark chocolate has four main ingredients, if I'm right. Cocoa solids, which are the actual cocoa bean, the mess that's crushed and, you know, turns into a paste and you add it to everything else. Cocoa butter and sugar. There are only three main ingredients. That's dark chocolate. You can add milk and get milk chocolate, or you can take away cocoa solids and add milk and that's white chocolate. That's why a lot of people say white chocolate isn't chocolate at all, because it doesn't have any cocoa solids. So there's no, it's just basically the fat from the cocoa bean plus milk and sugar. That's why it's so delicious. No. Milk or white chocolate is my favorite, which a lot of people make fun of me for. Forget that. Can they temper it? That's now my like this, uh, yes. metric for coolness. Am I there yet? You see, you should be. I would take it off. Really? We'll, yeah, we'll add a strip of yours to the. We're gonna add a strip of mine to the top. Okay, I'm gonna drizzle it down, and you're gonna take an offset. You've got. You, okay. Okay. Hey, you can if you're you do. Oh no! Is it really there? Maybe warm it up a little more. I'm so nervous. We'll I see. didn't know you could have uh, dark milk chocolate um, until a few years ago when my husband Josh and I got married. Yeah. We went to yes. Iceland and we visited, this was a year and a half ago. God, I can't, it wasn't that long ago for me to not figure that out. Um, and we visited a place called Omnom in Reykjavik. And my favorite one there was their milk dark chocolate, which just means there's not as much milk. Now I've forgotten everything. All of a sudden, I'm It could be about milk, but not as much well, sugar. Not as much sugar. Yes, not as much sugar. That would make um, sense. It was delicious. I, I guess I'm a milk chocolate person, but a dark milk chocolate person. And so I haven't feel like I haven't checked in a while. Oh my gosh. I did a project on um, Milton Hershey in middle school, and I can't remember much. I did not aspire to be a baker uh, when I was in middle school. I don't even know how I got here. I decided one day I wanted to go to Le Cordon Bleu, and now I'm here. And I'm so happy for it, and so fortunate. So I think it, this is, a, this is where we start fudging the rules a bit. I think it might be a little warm in here. It is to, uh, super hot in here. Set the chocolate at room temperature. And this is the trick for everyone. Thank you. Anyone who did it with chocolate chips, anything else. If you, if it doesn't look like this is setting, 
one trick on a hot day, and this is, I can see it setting around the edges, if you can tell the glossiness, but it's still a little liquid, which means it may just not be cool enough to set tempered. Of all the days for it to, for us to be tempering chocolate. So, one thing you can do, and this is what we're gonna do with all of our chocolate anyway. No matter is, what you use. No matter what you used, is you can put it in the fridge. And usually with tempered chocolate, you wanna avoid the fridge because you can't quite tell the temper of it based on that. But one thing you can do is put it in the fridge, pull it out and see how it sets and see how it behaves at room temperature. Shall Here we, we go. Take a little bit? Yes, you should take a little bit and see Look, what that's happens. Beautiful. Oh, that see, now why does it go gloop? Is that just white chocolate? It is this white chocolate, white chocolate behavior? One more pull. Jacob's being very kind and not Good. having to say no, it's also, you, Sarah. one important thing is that if you can see, I got an accidentally a very nice, clean, thin line that will set faster. So if you put a big blob on, expect it to take a little longer to end up setting. But nice, thin lines are easier for setting. So I'm going to stick this in the fridge. Should we make our bark while that sits in yes. the fridge? Yeah. Yeah. No matter what, we're going to end up with some beautiful bark. So it's no worries. So, we're gonna get all of our toppings prepared. Yes. You don't want your chocolate sitting out for too long. If you notice it start to set on the sides, give it a stir. If it's still not incorporating, put it on the heat for a little bit. But usually, once it starts setting on the sides, it's if, it, if you have a really thick amount of chocolate on the sides that is yeah. hard, you can't really heat it up enough unless you take it out of temper and restart. I just said that because mine was sort of go. Mine was sort of yep. going there. So I'm gonna get the chips ready. We're not gonna use a lot, a lot of chips, but we are gonna use, we're gonna use a little bit, but we're gonna crush them into pieces. That way you don't end up having a whole chip in your mouth on top of your bark. And I'm gonna cut some of these dried cherries up. You need like a, a sheet pan, anything flat. You could use a cutting board. I do recommend parchment underneath your chocolate. Yes, always good to have parchment underneath. You could also do, a lot of times in kitchens, we'll, we'll use acetate. Or if you guys That's remember the idea. overhead projector, <laughs> yes. those, those sheets that teachers would write on, that is great also. Do you use those at all anymore? No. No, oh my gosh. I know the days are, are gone, but yeah, those, especially more. if you want chocolate to keep it a really nice shine and let's say the bottom side for a bark, it's fine because the bottom side isn't the side we're going to be looking at, but yeah. if you are going to be viewing or looking at the side that is touching the paper, acetate keeps a really nice oh. shine. I'm throwing offsets. No one be sorry, Jacob. I was grabbing an offset to spread my chocolate with. Perfect. And now I'm gonna I'm gonna just spread it on my parchment. Yep. Can you see my nerves? Yeah, it'll be a little difficult to spread, but it'll be okay. Oh come on. We want now. a nice thin layer. Oh my goodness. For the chips. And I, I, I'm assuming you're doing the same. We want, we don't want dust. Yes. We want noticeable pieces, but we yes. also don't want people to have to bite into a whole chip. Yeah. And I am going for thin enough. Because we still want it to snap when it breaks. I don't want it to be so okay. thin where we can't even. I'm happy with that. And we already have toffee bits. Oh, yeah. We got to check our chocolate in the. We're going to check our chocolate. Ah! Looks good. <gasps> we'll see how it behaves at room temperature. But as you can see, it still has a shine on it. So it's shiny. You can't quite test the snap of it, unfortunately, but it's looking good. If, it, if you take it out and it looks dull or there are streaks on it, um, then it may be an issue. And that'll be a visual issue. Yes. Yeah, and nothing this is kind of the thing about chocolate. Nothing we're doing is to really enhance the flavor. 
It's not that we're looking to, you know, it's not that this makes the flavor oh so much better. It does affect the flavor a tiny bit because just of our how our mouths detect the taste of chocolate. But it doesn't, it's not like, oh, you're going to have awful tasting chocolate if you don't do it this way. It'll still taste like chocolate. And I would recommend pushing these in a little bit. Yes, always nice. That way when you, if you are giving these out as gifts and you wrap them nicely in a bag, ah! it doesn't, you know, it, it doesn't fall out, all out in the bag. Someone said um, burr bark recently, and now I'm yep. like, wait, is that, is that going to happen this winter? The next Am I going to release some burr bark? Creation. With tempering by guests, Jacob. No, okay, I'm confident I can do this you again can do this. on FaceTime with you. Absolutely. Or maybe with you here and I'm just watching you do it. Absolutely. And so just spread out the chocolate, get it nice, get it beautiful, put your toppings in, and no matter what, we're going to go in the fridge. Yeah. Because we're all using different kinds of chocolate. Guitard is a great one. Ghirardelli is a great one. Ghirardelli doesn't have a lot of chocolates that they release that are made for professionals. Mm. Um, in terms of like, you know, for chocolatiers. If you really want to go high end, there is a company called Calibo. C-A-L-L-E-B-A-U-T. I think so. And they are a yeah. very high-end, very high-end um, professional chocolatier. They are actually... Oh! Oh, it's backwards. I never talked about it. I forgot. This, this is, is our special. fourth kind of chocolate. Fourth this is a very special kind of chocolate. It is being marketed as the next kind of chocolate. White Just chocolate like, came out, what, in the 70s? Like, recently. Some, yeah, sometime around there. And so this is called Ruby Chocolate. And it is... 100% chocolate. It, there are no colorants. It's a beautiful red color. And it's made through a special fermentation process that only Calibo knows. So they kind of have a monopoly on the ruby chocolate market. It is so acidic. And it it's, is like berries. Yeah, I can't believe it it's pink. It tastes like berries. And they and, say the pink's natural. Yeah, and the pink is supposed oh to be gosh, natural. Okay, this is going into the fridge. I just gotta, come on, I'm so excited about this. I'm so, I feel like even the colors are deadened on yours. That is fruity pebbles and dried uh, cherries and berries. I actually, I forgot about this. When I was working for the first few months at Sequoia High School, we did for Halloween, we made bark. And all the students you got did? to pick their toppings. Oh and I gosh. did not show them how to temper chocolate because it was a little out wow. of the range. This, this is but they all made bark. And so they, it was great. It was so much fun. It was a little stress reliever activity yeah. near Halloween. And a little bit of candy that they could take home with them. Can you combine chocolate with anything? Like um, if you wanted to make peanut butter chocolate bark. Can you incorporate peanut butter after yeah. you've laid your chocolate out? Can you smear yes. peanut butter on it? Yeah, if you're looking for a good temper, you want to avoid adding things okay. while the chocolate is kind of in its mass. Okay. But what you could do is you could lay the chocolate down and you could put like lines of peanut butter and kind of make nice streaks. And as long as you're not breaking up, like mixing in items into the chocolate, you should still have that nice temper, hopefully. See, now that sounds right up my alley, peanut butter chocolate bark. And I do see that the, at least Instagram will shut off in 20 seconds, we'll pop back on. So, and you're welcome to join us um, to show you our finished bark. So when Perfect. it ends, we'll, we'll be right back. Perfect. Pa oh, okay, okay. Sorry, Facebook, give me one second. We are still here and we'll show you our finished bark. I just wanna get Instagram back up and running. And the white chocolate bark just went into the fridge. I'll give it a few minutes, pull it out. And um, then we're gonna put the, oh, so excited. I just wanna eat these potato chips. Oh, I wanna eat everything. It's like, uh, I'm who not needs self-control? Sure quantities on this. So we'll just, we'll just do a full scent. We'll just, we'll put a lot of chips on and see if that is 
the way to go. I feel like they'll add a very nice crunch. Almost back on Instagram, you guys. And it's checking our connection. Okay. Hello, Instagram again. Um, white chocolates in the fridge. Oh, come on. I'm so excited about this dark Perfect. chocolate. <gasps> I'm going to leave it up to you. So I don't Chips, mess anything toffee. Up. No, I just made some room. I had no idea Perfect. we had so much food in the fridge right now. So get it in the fridge. It shouldn't affect anything at all. We... It was always kind of a warning that we were told not to put chocolate in the fridge, but because we only had a few hours per lesson, it was commonly used without very many bad side effects. So even if you use chips, whatever chocolate you use, just get it on in the fridge. It will set up hard, it will be firm, and everything will be okay. Yes, and if you're like me and you just tilted your chocolate and you have separate pieces of parchment, and it separated a little. As you can see, Everything's our cool. chocolate is now at room temperature. We, it's been sitting out from the fridge. We got it in. We took it back out just to help the process. And it is still hard to the touch. It is not melting, which should mean that it is That's a good temper. Great. If, it, if you pulled it back out and it started melting again. That's a problem. It's either too hot in the room, which, which? we're bordering on, or... Unfortunately, it's not perfectly tempered. What is the ideal temperature for, like, in your room to work? I mean, I think it's at least 80 degrees Anything, anything temperate. Okay. Anything, not 80 you degrees, know, for six, instance. Usually what we have in the area is very nice. Yeah. Yeah. Also, one nice thing, if you do want to be fancy and go for a mm -hmm. better type of chocolate, most of the time, I think they do on this bag, as you can see, oh, wow, this is a lot of information. But there's a little chart there, and that chart shows you the exact temperatures to hit. So you're supposed to you're supposed to heat it up to 113 degrees, cool it down to oh 80.6, and you're supposed to work with it at 89.6. And there's so, no. You think someone would invent a thermometer that was best for tempering chocolate? Yeah. It's it's a hard thing because the, yeah. it's very uneven. How do chocolate tempering machines work? Because I know in school they had a tempering yes. machine and it was like a chocolate yeah. waterfall. At all they times. kind of work the same way as as sous vide, where they keep they keep the chocolate moving. Okay. When you're stirring by hand with your own thermometer, yeah. that works, but it's kind of hard to manage. And so chocolate tempering machines, they will do the process for you, hit the right temperatures. They're programmable. And they have an enrobing machine, which is the waterfall of chocolate that you can put things underneath quickly oh, okay. and shake them off and make sure you get a nice thin layer. But you can also do that by hand. Would they ever, this is crazy, I don't know how chocolate fountains work for like parties. Would yeah. they ever use, they don't care enough to put temperature No, in usually, there, this is something you may not want to know. Usually for chocolate fa fountains, they add vegetable oil or canola oil okay. to make it nice and smooth nice and shiny, shiny and makes it flow. But usually that's not the best quality chocolate. Ooh. So I would I would stick to your own dipped products. Well, we're going to up our game now with all yes. of our chocolate fountains that it's, we have. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I guess they don't, they're not looking for that to set though. No. If you're like dipping things in chocolate They're fountain, usually not looking it. for it to set and usually the oh, machines aren't made to handle the viscosity of chocolate. So usually you need to right. add fat to it to really make it flow well. I know I have, I have seen for dipped products that are supposed to set, I think eventually, I've seen them add, um, or, or say grab chocolate, melt it together with shortening. Yeah. Is that to increase shine without a real temper? Yes, when you start adding fats, it's harder to temper. Because you're adding, you, you're lessening oh the gosh. cocoa butter, there's less cocoa butter to oh. actually keep the nice, hard Who knew? I temper. didn't know that. Yeah. It's making me it's question very a lot interesting. of things I've read. It's very interesting, and it takes practice. It takes a lot of practice. It's hard to do, even on your... You have to learn by eye. It's best to know by eye. You can always check the temperature mm -hmm. as you go, but... Like, I tempered the ruby chocolate about six months ago, 
And I did use a thermometer, but I found it to be more challenging to try and follow their instructions than just trusting yeah. it. But it was my first time doing it. It's a new kind of chocolate, so I was very nervous. Did it set? It did. It set well. It set at, it's, there was a nice temper, and I was able to make uh, a white chocolate ganache with matcha, and I was able to make truffles out of that. Oh, excuse me. What? So, yeah. Uh, white chocolate, matcha, ruby chocolate. Yeah, so truffle. ruby chocolate outside, and to offset kind of the, the acidity of white chocolate matcha ganache. Oh my gosh. That sounds really good. Yeah, it was different for sure. Wow. I thought about doing truffles today, except usually I think the, I don't know anything about Truffles they have to take set. a while. Yeah, okay. You have to enrobe and you have to scrape it off and you have to let it set and then fill it and you have to keep your chocolate in temper the entire time. Well, yeah, time. bark is like forgiving. Yes, and this bark is, our is very first forgiving. Session. You know, plus now I'm wondering because of how hot it is in here, I'm feeling it yeah. right now. Um, is that why bark's a winter thing? Because yeah, it might be. That might be. Guys, people do your bark out. in winter. Yeah, yeah we've dealt we've dealt with the summer chocolate grind before. It is rough. It is very rough. I remember doing um, Pizza VA cakes, puff pastry mm -hmm. base. Yep. In the dead of summer, it's like 95 degrees in the kitchen at school, and our butter was just melting out of our puff yep. pastry. It was horrible. Yeah. Someone got a really good puff, though, and sort of proved it was possible. You know those people. Always, yeah. I'm not that not person. Fair. Should we check our chocolate? Yes, let's check it. It may not be completely set Don't yet. worry about what happened to, to your chocolate. No, We're no worries. Do. White's almost there. Well, okay, guys. You know, I just want to say that this is my first time Okay, and yes, Jacob's is set and mine isn't already, but could we just cut it, some It slack? all depends on where you're at. Okay, sorry that I split no. the parchment. Let me make a little crack out of this. Sorry that I split split our parchment. No, it's all good. <gasps> so the it bark snapped. should snap. It snaps, you guys. And you should be able to <gasps> have a nice How piece. You should be able to crack it that? apart. And oh. Do you want to give it a shot? Yes. Oh my gosh. Here I got. This is kind taste. of our weird flavor. This is our weird flavors. Here you are. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. Mmm. I mean, yeah. it's delicious. Oh, my gosh. Mmm. Mmm. That is very rich chocolate. That's very good. That is really super rich. We're taking turns at the sink. My goodness. Okay. Very good. Should I check the white? Give it a try. Give it a try. If it needs, if your if your chocolate needs more time, that is more than okay. And I can. I always like to update. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit sticky still. Should we cut off a piece? If it's yeah, we'll give it a try. We'll give it a try, and then I'll update you guys but once the bark is fully set. Definitely leave it in. Yeah, definitely leave it in until it's not sticky anymore. That's still good though. It's not quite set. Why don't I cut a piece off? Perfect. And I'll cut a piece off for each of us. Oh wow, maybe I shouldn't. Wait, you want to just give it that? A, yeah, give it a I try. Would Let's give it a try, and then we have to let it. Perfect. Set. Of all the weekends, I mean, it was worth it so you could be here before Cheers. school. <laughs> mm, that's my favorite. If you like it sweet. Yep. Go for this. Whoa. Thank you so much, Jacob. Thank Sorry you. Sorry that our carpet's you, 100 degrees. No. Try this. Give it a shot. <clears throat> Excuse me, if you're having a hot day today, don't, if, if yours isn't, if yours is sort of like, yeah. oh, it's taking time like ours. Leave it in the fridge. Leave it in the fridge. Don't be discouraged. Even, feel free to move it to the freezer. Yeah. Does this, okay. Can you keep this in the freezer? Usually, if your chocolate is well set, if you notice that at room temperature it's starting to melt, keep it in the fridge or freezer. If um, it looks well set at room temperature, then you can just leave it out at room temperature and it should be fine. Bam. Yeah, yeah th we, now we know why this is a winter thing. Yeah. Oh my exactly. gosh, I'll update with uh, photos once these puppies are fully set. You'll see our creations. I just want to eat all of that right now. Um, otherwise, I actually have another special guest next week. I, when I found out, I was so excited. Get Everyone ready. should tune in. I actually have plans for the next two weeks, and the following week you'll see a poll again. But next week, my choice, 
new guest, which I'm really excited about. We won't be tempering chocolate. We're having a different adventure. But can we just, if there, if this were live, can we just like have a round of applause no, for no Jacob? Round of applause. So happy I'm you came happy over, and school is about to start. And you have so much going on, and I am not afraid to temper chocolate. And I'm gonna yeah. try it again, yeah. and I'm gonna do it when you're not here, it and I'm gonna perfect. call you and maybe crying and be like, Jacob, what, what, what do I do next? What's the next step? Um, this video will be up with tips. There's no real recipe today, but I'll put the tips on there. Uh, this will be up tomorrow or Tuesday on the site and on YouTube, and I'm gonna put edited versions on Facebook and Instagram, one, because of connectivity issues, but two, I wanna give you a visual of some of those buzzwords so that you really, you can look them up yourself. Sorry for all the noises, Facebook. Um, and yeah, I'll see you guys next week. Jacob, thank you so Perfect. much. Thank you, everyone. So fun. Hear this snap. Oh my gosh.